and welcome to another fabulous episode of Thyroid Refresh TV, a podcast dedicated to helping you live a thyroid healthy lifestyle. We're so glad to be back with you again. I'm Dana Bowman. And I'm Jenny Mahar, and we are the dynamic duo behind Thyroid Refresh and Thyroid 30. And we are thrilled to be here today with Marcella Friel to talk about the emotional freedom technique, also known as tapping or EFT. Marcella's new book is called Tap, Taste, Heal, Use Emotional Freedom Technique to Eat Joyfully and Love Your Body. Welcome, Marcella. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Ginny and Dana. It's so nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. We're so glad to have you. We have a great, great show lined up for you guys. Before we get started, I want to read a little bit about your background for everybody. So I'm going to get your bio um, on record. Marcella Friel is a trained whole food chef, body image mentor, longtime Buddhist teacher, and author of Tap, Taste, Heal. She's an alum of the Natural Gourmet Institute of New York City and has cooked and taught in meditation retreat centers across North America. She's a certified tapping instructor who, through her coaching practice, has helped countless people heal their relationship with food. It's also known as Emotional Freedom Techniques, EFT. It's an energy healing practice in which pressure is self-applied to points on the head, face, and body in tandem with vocalized affirmational statements that together short-circuit harmful thought patterns. And I have done it, and it works, and it's very cool. So, so glad to have you today. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, we're so excited to talk about your book and about EFT, but um, maybe before we dive in, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your personal story? I, I was really, I'm so loving your book, and I was really um, surprised when you say that you're one of the, the rare few who has never dieted. Oh. <laughs> Right. <laughs> have you always had a healthy relationship with food? And if so, like what drew you to this work? How did you, oh, what wow. was your trajectory that got you here? Oh gosh, that's, that's a, a long story, but yes. Well, first of all, thanks so much for inviting me. And yeah, I've never dieted, not a single day in my life. It's so crazy, but um, my relationship with food, I would say it was kind of like, bipolar almost because on the one hand I'm the granddaughter of Sicilian immigrants who came from Ellis Island and my grandfather was a gardener and my grandmother was a cook and I ate like incredible vegetables from their garden and you know I mean I eat really really well with my grandparents but my mother um, ran an Italian delicatessen that kind of morphed into like a candy store actually. <laughs> and as a kid, I used to help her in the store. And so literally I was like a kid in the candy store. So on the one hand, it was like fresh vegetables and fruits and meats and all this. And then on the other hand, it was like jawbreakers and pixie sticks and whoppers, <laughs> you know? Right. And so that kind of really wide pendulum swing stuck with me through most of my life. And then when I was in my early 30s, um, I got really, really sick. And basically there was a 10 day window where like I couldn't leave my house, I couldn't leave the bathroom. And I went to a naturopath and he literally like, he did some tests and then he like, he looked at me over his glasses and he said, how much sugar are you eating? And I was like, uh -oh. just one candy bar a day so I was kind of like this <laughs> low dose I like I, like if I were an alcoholic I'd be like a functional alcoholic like one or two drinks a day mm. so I was kind of like a functional sugarholic and you know he said basically your stomach is broken and <sighs> you know like you don't have digestive enzymes left and your pancreas is exhausted and I was 34 mm. um so I knew something had to give and I was actually pre-diabetic. And so I began to explore the relationship between food and healing. And that led me to go to the natural gourmet and certify as a natural food chef. And I taught culinary school for nine years and so on. So I was able to do a lot of that sort of sugar holic healing just through changing my relationship with food. Mm. The tapping came in much later when um, I 
was working as a chef in a residential treatment facility for women recovering from love addiction. That was a pretty amazing experience. And I was teaching culinary school and I felt like I needed like a depth charge to my work. Like there was just some way that I wasn't fully bringing forth everything that I knew that I wanted to share. So I had this intention of wanting to share my wisdom on a deeper level. And, you know, it's so funny when you ask the universe, you know, like, okay, this is what I want. The universe answers your prayers, but not in the ways that you expect. So um, for the following six years, my life went, as my mother used to say, ass over tin cups. I had like one crisis trauma after another, after another, after another. And it was in the midst of all that devastation that somebody said, hey, um, I've learned this thing called tapping. Do you want to try it? And I did it with her for like five minutes. And it was like, just like I think what you were saying about your husband, you know, it was like, wow, wait a second. I was just really upset five minutes ago. And now like it's gone. So that started me on the journey of um, becoming a tapping practitioner. And so even though I've never dieted, and even though I've been a size four petite pretty much my whole life, I feel like the basis from which I relate to my clients and my students is, you know, the food and body image issues are kind of like the tip of the iceberg. You know, it's like, you, like the thyroid issues, you know, it's kind of like the tip of the iceberg, but then you go underneath that and that's where you get like the deeper emotional stuff that needs to be healed. And that's the level that I work with my clients at because that's the journey that I've had to be on, especially in like, you know, these last, you know, several years when just, just been a lot, you know, just a lot to deal with. So right. I know it's a long winded way of answering your no, question. I, that's yeah. That was wonderfully put. And, you know, it sounds like this work isn't just for people. It doesn't have to be extreme, right? The trauma, it's not just for people with, you know, what we might think of or know as common eating disorders necessarily, right? I mean, and it's not just for food issues. This could be for other kinds of limiting beliefs or things we do to sabotage ourselves or, you know, just those deep emotional wounds that sometimes we don't even realize we have, right? Yeah. Well, if you think about it, you know, I'm sure that you guys in your work, you know, you think about thyroid health. And on the one hand, you start out, you're looking at this little gland in the base of your throat. But as you go deeper, you realize that it touches every aspect of your life. So the same thing with food behaviors, you know, food is so central to who we are and how we perceive ourselves and how we nourish ourselves. So, you know, in terms of traumas, I mean, I, you know, it could be workplace stress that's causing me to eat. It could be, you know, old residual traumas from my childhood, just beliefs that are causing, driving my behavior with food. It could be sexual stuff. It could be, I mean, it can, it can come from everywhere and anywhere, but it shows up in this particular way. So, you know, in, in the work that I do with my women, you know, we, we work at the presenting level, but that's just the beginning. That's just the tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So by the time women come to work with me, you know, I hear this a lot. Like, I know there are emotional issues behind my relationship with food and I just can't get to them. I want to love and forgive myself. I want to accept my body as it is, no matter what the numbers is on the scale. Right. But, right. but how do I even begin to do that? That's, you know, that's the dilemma. And that's where the tapping uh, there's a saying in the tapping world, try it on everything. So, you know, I, one day I lost my keys and I was upset about losing my keys and I did some tapping and it was like, poof, you know, my keys just showed up in my gym bag. Um, so, you know, you can work on that sort of very superficial level or you can go as deep as, you know, in utero trauma, past lives, 
you know, pre-verbal. I mean, we can, if you, tapping can take you all over the map. And that's one of the great things about it. Mm -hmm. We love that. Well, we're so excited about your book, Tap, Taste, and Heal. And we just felt like this is such an amazing and powerful option to share with our community, who obviously is here to improve their thyroid health. But so much of that comes down to emotional root causes. And they're, you know... Everything is connected, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. In your book, um, the preface, I mm -hmm. thought was so beautifully written mm -hmm. and touches on how all those pieces connect to each other and really spoke to me as, you know, as a human, but also as a thyroid patient and just sort of bidding this all into the whole bigger picture. Would you mind sharing that preface with us? Plus, it's, sure. a, it's a big story. It's a big preface. You, you hit me right. And I was like, okay, I'm going to read this whole book. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm in, right? Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the story of how the book came to be. So let me uh, just show everybody here. This is my book. It's my little baby. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> Have taste heal. Oh, it's such a good book. She is beautiful. She, she is, is so beautiful. beautiful. So let me, yes, I'd be happy to read you the preface of the book here. So, hmm. On the morning of Monday, October 9th, 2017, while visiting my beloved former hometown of Sonoma, California, I woke up to an innocent text from a nearby friend. Are you okay? I had no idea why she would ask me that. Looking out the front window, I saw a typical foggy Northern California morning, except the fog was smoke. Something like snowflake, snowflakes was falling silently from the air. It was ash. The largest wildfire to date in the history of California was ripping through Sonoma County, burning a few short miles all around me to the north, east and south. In a few short hours, I saw my homeland of 10 years, God's chosen place on earth, in the words of horticulturalist Luther Burbank, shapeshift from heaven to hell. I was looking straight into the eyes of climate disaster. As I wended my way through the devastation, helping friends who had lost their homes, evacuating my guest lodging to go who knows where, I continually pray to the universe, please use me. Let me be helpful in any way I can. One month later, working in my home office in Southern Colorado, I received an email out of the blue from an old friend and book publishing colleague of many years, Pamela Berkman, who had recently accepted a position as acquisitions editor at North Atlantic Books in Berkeley. She invited me to submit a proposal to write the book that you are now holding in your hands, or that I'm actually holding in my hands. <laughs> Hopefully soon you'll be holding in your hands. <laughs> Tap Taste Heal is not a book about climate change. It's a book about how to use the remarkably transformative tool of tapping, also called EFT or emotional freedom techniques, to resolve the myriad conflicting emotions, traumatic memories, and limiting beliefs that drive your struggles with emotional eating, binges and cravings, sugar addiction, and chronic body shaming. Perhaps it seems to you that these very personal issues have nothing to do with the fate of the planet. In reality, they are directly, intimately, and inextricably connected. Industrial agriculture, which supplies the fodder for those processed foods we hate to love to eat, is the second largest emitter of greenhouse gases on the planet. For this and other reasons that I outline in this book, our personal food choices can no longer be exclusively personal. How we eat, what we eat, and by extension, how we live our lives create impacts that ripple like stones in a pond to our family, our community, our society, the planet, and perhaps even beyond. So healing our relationship with food isn't just about us feeling better, though that's certainly a desirable outcome. Mother Earth can no longer finance the dubious luxury of our degraded food choices. It's all hands on deck now. 
More than any other time in human history, each of us is needed to manifest the sanity our world so desperately needs. And how can we be sane people if we're not eating sane foods in a sane way? I love that. Uh, how can we be sane people if we're not eating not sane, sane foods food. in a sane way? How can we be healthy? How can we keep ourselves healthy and well, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. So let's, let's dive in. How does EFT work? Mm. Well, EFT sometimes is called emotional acupuncture. And what it involves is fingertip tapping on points that are at or near the ends of certain acupuncture meridians while recollecting a stressful situation. So it could be something as minor as losing your keys, or it could be something as major as like what we call a capital T trauma. It could run the whole spectrum of human distress. So we think about, you know, losing our keys or what have you, while we're tapping. And what the tapping does is it acts as a kind of circuit breaker on the electromagnetic signal of the stress. So there's three levels to our brain. There's basically the back of our brain, the brain stem, which is called the reptilian brain. That's like our oldest, most primitive brain. There's the midbrain, which is called the mammalian brain. It's all like right in here. And then there's the frontal part, which is the human brain. You know, this is the youngest part of our brain, basically. And the stress that we experience from traumatic, you know, experiences. Uh, resides in the limbic system of the brain where there's this little tiny almond shaped gland called the amygdala and the amygdala is kind of like the smoke alarm um, of our nervous system it's like you know something happens and the amygdala goes okay wait a second is this you know is there any danger here is there any danger here so the tapping down regulates the limbic system down regulates the amygdala it says you know what it's okay it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, and tapping can work really quickly to release distress where talk therapy doesn't because we're working directly with that midbrain. You know, you can talk about something for years, but you're, you know, that is all focused up here. That's all in the, you know, the neocortex and the frontal lobe and all of that. Um, it, it, it takes a long time through speech for it to penetrate back into the limbic system because this part of our brain is older than speech. So it's pretty amazing. And, and that's where you get these amazing, like, you know, wow, my sugar craving is gone. You know, in five minutes, it's, it can be pretty, pretty, it's a lot of fun when that kind of thing happens. Mm -hmm. I bet it's amazing to see those results with your clients too. Can you can you share some stories with us about yeah. the the miraculous transformations that you've been a midwife to? Oh yeah, my gosh. I'd have to flip through like a whole Rolodex of them. Let's see, which one? Well, the one that I mentioned in the first chapter of the book, um, it was one of my first experiences and it was really very dramatic. I had a client named Elizabeth who was um, 100 pounds overweight. She had metabolic syndrome. She was depressed. And she was addicted to diet soda. And she had cases of diet soda stockpiled in her garage. And she knew she had to give it up. But at the same time, you know, her attitude was like, don't take my diet soda away from me. Like she knew, again, you know, the frontal part of the brain knew she had to let it go, but that midbrain was like, no, please. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I asked her like, well, what is that about? And she said, well, it's the only thing I have that's mine. So can you see like right there, there's a belief, right? That, you know, this diet soda, it's the only thing I have that's mine. So we did some tapping on that. And we kind of, you know, got her immediate emotional distress resolved. And then I said, where is your earliest memory of that feeling of, you know, this is mine, don't take it away from me. And we went back to a little six-year-old girl who had loaded up her wagon with donuts and soda to run away from home because dad was mistreating her. And this so was little Elizabeth. 
Yes, exactly. Little Elizabeth. And so, um, you know, we did some very, very deep tapping where she was holding that image of her six year old running away, tapping on herself and then simultaneously visualizing that she was in that scene with the six year old and tapping on the six year old. Do you see? It's kind of complicated. Uh huh. Uh huh. But she was able to go back and, you know, and again, like with the brain, there's no difference between what we visualize, you know, from the subjective point of view, what we visualize and what we actually experience. So, you know, this was actually happening. So she was tapping on that little younger one and saying to her, you know, this isn't your fault. Like dad, dad's behavior is not your fault and there's nothing wrong with you. And she had a huge, you know, emotional release and relief from this. And then one week later, she sent me an email and she said, Marcella, I just have to tell you, you know, I was kind of skeptical that I could, that this had anything to do with the diet soda or that I could let the diet soda go. And she said, I haven't wanted one single diet soda this whole week. And she said, it hasn't even been a pull. I've gone to the supermarket. I've seen the big end displays of diet soda, nothing. I've been drinking, wow. you know, iced tea. I've been drinking herbal water. I've been, uh, and she said, I'm just going to throw out the, the, the soda in the garage. And so, you know, that was huge. And we kind of finished up our work. And then 18 months later, she contacted me again to do some other work. And I said to her, like, how's the diet soda? And she went, oh, what diet soda? Oh, I, oh, <laughs> I forgot I even had a problem with it. Wow. So that's, that can happen a lot with tapping where um, you can forget. You, wow. you can just forget that you even had a struggle. Well, and it doesn't take a long time, it sounds like, to see some really powerful results. Yeah. You know, and, and of course, not every modality is for everybody. So like, I don't want to make this grand universal promise. Like if you tap, your problems will be solved in five minutes. But for the people for whom it resonates, um, it's kind of like taking a supersonic jet versus riding a bicycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be, it can be pretty fast. And, you know, in my own story, um, you know, when I was talking about my life going haywire after my mother died in 2009, um, a big belief that I was struggling with, like I knew I needed to teach at a deeper level. I knew that I needed to manifest at a deeper level. But a big piece of what was in the way for me was if I'm successful, I will be alone. Mm -hmm. And in working with the tapping practitioner that I worked with, you know, when I investigated the roots of that belief, um, where it came from was I was in fifth grade and I received these academic awards. And I was walking down the aisle with these awards in my hand and nobody, none of my family was with me. My mother was a working mother. My father was gone. He had passed away, you know, the year before. My siblings were all in school. There was nobody there. And... So it wasn't until I was able to go back to that memory, you know, which always had this kind of like stressful residue and tap it through that then I could make a conscious choice and say, well, actually, the more I succeed, the more I have to share with other people and the more room there is for other people to come in. And that's, you know, that's where I live from now. Wow. That's, that's yeah. very powerful. And like that story, you know, you can have so many um, wonderful stories of, of, of this happening, of this helping with uh, food disorders and different traumas and limiting beliefs and things. But how can this, you know, people that are watching this or thyroid patients, you know, how do you see this helping them? Mm. Well, you know, we were talking before, before we hit the record button about, um, this whole notion of the thyroid, and it is, it's so amazing. It literally is shaped like a butterfly, right? So there's this sense of this butterfly moving through your whole metabolic system, influencing all these metabolic processes. When I heard about this and when I began to learn about the thyroid, I was reminded of this quote from Deepak Chopra, every cell in your body hears what you say. 
every cell in your body hears what you say. So it makes me think about, you know, there's two levels to that. On the one hand, there's actually how we use our speech and how we talk about ourselves and how we talk about our lives, right? So if we say it's hopeless, you know, in my book, I say the universe says yes to every thought. Then the universe says, yes, it is hopeless, right? And your thyroid is bringing that message to your whole body. It's hopeless. Versus if you say, um, I'm on a path of healing. The universe says yes to that. And tapping is the tool that can actually bridge, you know, from one to the other. Because we could say, like, oh, I know I shouldn't be thinking that way, right? But again, here we are in the front of our brain, but back here, it's like, it's hopeless, it's hopeless, it's hopeless, right? right. So that's where tapping, we can say, okay, even though I feel like it's hopeless, I know it's not true, but I feel like that. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and tap that out. And we can actually release it um, into a bigger realm of possibility. Wow. So, you know, and then that, you know, does that actually heal your thyroid? Well, no, but it sets up the emotional slash hormonal slash metabolic conditions where the healing has a better chance of taking root. Mm. I think it's one of the easiest things, one of the easiest root causes to underestimate or overlook for thyroid patients too are those root those emotional root causes the the limiting beliefs you know the like we have a um some stuff on thyroid refresh about the importance of speaking your truth yes. right and the throat chakra and having this almost an energetic blockage right and i i wanted to share really quick because this is so um perfect i just came across this a friend shared this louise hay book with me and i apologize i don't have the um I don't know the title offhand, but it's a book where, you know, Louise, our beloved Louise Hay, you know, the queen of affirmations, Uh she um, breaks down all the, these different conditions and like the limiting belief that's sort of at the root and then like the, the freeing belief. And when you look up thyroid, um, also, you know, gut goiter, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, it says, that the, you know, the core, like, limiting belief is, or feeling is humiliation. I never get to do what I want to do. When is it going to be my turn? And then the freeing, you know, belief is I move beyond old limitations and now allow myself to express freely and creatively. And it's sort of, you know, she comes at it from a different angle, but I can see how just looking at you know our thyroid issues through that lens of how our thoughts can limit us this could be such a powerful tool for undoing that right for as you're saying that i'm getting this from that i'm getting this image of a butterfly in a cage Mm -hmm. right like how how far can a butterfly fly if it's in this cage Mm -hmm. right and humiliation, of course, is like, it's such a shutdown. Mm. Yeah. Such a shutdown. And, you know, the evil twin of humiliation or shame is perfectionism. And I know you guys have done some, you've had some guest speakers who have talked about like the type A personality mm. being driven. And, you know, if you look at that, it's like, if I'm not perfect, I'm horrible. Mm. Or if I'm not perfect, everybody's going to know. Right. Yeah, that was Dr. Tara Lensell. We Uh did a show with her on um, our high achievers more prone to thyroid issues. Yeah. So like what, again, like I was saying to you guys earlier, you know, like we can look at stress and we all know the connection between stress and health. And we can say, well, okay, so why am I stressed out? Well, let's see, you know, my job is stressful or I have financial stress or my kid is acting out or what have you. But in the work that I do with women, it's like, let's go down to the boiler room and let's look at the engine that is generating the stress. And it's exactly what you just hit on with um, what Louise Hay was saying. Like, 
because we can have a set of circumstances in our life that can be challenging, um, that we can meet either with like panic and fear and, you know, this kind of energy, uh, or we can have a stressful circumstance that we meet with like openness and possibility and, you know, trusting in divine guidance or what have you. Same circumstance, different approach. So, so the question then becomes what, what makes that difference? And to me, it's exactly what you were just talking about. So if I feel like, um, if I'm coming from a place of humiliation, then what's going to be the corollary of that? Well, perhaps I don't deserve, mm. right? I don't, I don't really deserve to heal. Or, um, I, you know, I'm not familiar with healing. Like, I don't know who I would be if I were really healed. So then what happens, what I do is I take half-hearted measures. Mm. I start a protocol and then I quit. Because healing then, it's not congruent with my identity of who I am. Mm. Because mm. I'm humiliated. Do you see, do you get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I feel like kind of talking in circles. Mm. So that's where tapping, I mean, this is what I find in my work with women is that we, we have to, to really heal. We have to re-engineer our, our identity at its core. And you talk and, about that, that self-sabotage and how it, it, it is trying to serve a purpose in our bodies, right? Yes. It's the soul's way of slowing down progress when it doesn't feel safe to succeed. And Can you say that, that again? Oh, I was just going to say, I think I'm going to say that again. <laughs> That's our acts of sabotage have never been about failure. They are simply our soul's way of slowing down progress when it doesn't feel safe to succeed. And so the tapping work can, again, bridge that, okay, I don't feel safe succeeding. Well, why not? Well, because... Um, I was told I will never be good enough. So if I actually do succeed, then I am good enough. So I have to make room in my whole energetic being that every cell in my body, here's what I say, I have to, you know, every cell in my body needs to get on board. Yes, permission granted, success is possible. And I mean, I must say, I, I have had the privilege of witnessing hundreds of clients and thousands of students who have had these kinds of quantum breakthroughs. So I would say if there's one thing I want your audience to take away from this conversation, it is that healing is absolutely possible. You know, we don't have to be stuck in these prisons of our own making. You know, one of the things we hear, just to, to kind of add into that, as thyroid patients, so many women that we talk to, Marcella, um, the doctors will say, um, diet and exercise doesn't matter. Are you serious? Yes. They really do? Well, they still say that? Well, or they, di diet and lifestyle doesn't really make a difference. It's really just, right. you know, taking your, taking your pill. thyroid hormone and... That's it. Yes. And that's yes. it. There's no, at the same time, we also hear you need to exercise more and eat less. Yeah. I mean, these, this is, this is what is, is a common thread that, that a lot of the thyroid patients that we talk to so many, so many that I talk to on thyroid nation radio. I mean, it's such a common thread and how limiting can you imagine how that feels? I mean, how limiting is that for people and you know tapping can help you stop 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 you know limiting yourself with those thoughts i just yeah. i think that's powerful that's it there's the butterfly in the cage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know there it is yeah I, I read a statistic somewhere that said synthroid is the fourth largest selling drug it was number one for several years but yeah now i think it's number four something like it's that something like that yeah. well you know that i mean most Physicians, I mean, I, I took eight hours of nutrition education when I was a student at the Natural Gourmet in the chef training program. And that's more than what most doctors get. Well, of course. Yeah. 
It's yeah. just, I think that, you know, with some of this work, you know, if you hear this from, you know, one of your doctors or you hear one of your friends say that this is what someone told them with some, you know, EFT, you can, you can overcome this belief that what the doctors are saying is true or that you can't heal unless you take your medicine or that, you know, you have to be on this medicine forever and there's nothing else you can do. Or I think there's lots of ways that this um, EFT can really help thyroid patients. Absolutely. Just that belief that you're powerless, right. you're powerless, there's nothing you can do. You know. Right. you know, and that's such an interesting phenomenon when you think about, you know, the thing I've been curious about, and I'd love to hear your perspective on this, is why do thyroid conditions affect women, midlife women, inordinately, mm-hmm. you know, relative to the rest of the population? Like, what is that connection here like, why is it women and why is it primarily midlife women who are, um, who have for, these issues? For me, it feels like because women are the caretakers. The, women's are the women are the ones that are uh, always doing things for everybody else. Then they're taking care of themselves last. That's one of the, that's one of the big things for me because self-care and taking it easy on yourself is just not practiced in the yeah. States. It's just not part of the common theme. It's like, you got to be a super mom. What I want. I never get to do what I want. When's it going to be my turn? I'm a, you know, I'm just here taking care of everyone else. And I mean, that's something that, you know, I think in some ways society inflicts on us Mm -hmm. in other ways we inflict upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. We, the the first arrow comes from society. The second arrow comes from ourselves. ourselves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a big piece that I do in my mentorship program, the Women, Food, and Forgiveness Academy. Uh, We work a lot on developing self-care skills and prioritizing self-care. So the image that I give to women, it's like you can't uh, draw from an empty well. You know, and I like there's a, like a, there's this image that I give them of like you're you're dipping the ladle down into the well so that you have something to give to other people, but that metal is just clanging the bottom of the well. Versus another way that you can go is to fill your own cup first, and then you share the overflow with your world, and everybody mm. benefits. Everybody oh, and probably benefits. so much more. I mean, I just get like tingly, just think like yes. Mm-hmm. Of course that makes so much more sense you know and then it comes from a place of joy and authenticity and self-love and compassion for others and all of those things that make us you know special as women you know that nurturing right yes and so again that it makes sense right when you deal with it up here it makes sense when you're dealing with it back here Oh, if I take care of myself first, I'm being selfish. Mm. Mm-hmm. How can I, or uh, how can I take care of myself when everybody else needs? And you know, something that I've been thinking about. This is interesting. You know, in terms of our conversation about trauma, you know, we talk a lot about abuse, right? Like, you know, we can talk about abuse and trauma. But there's kind of like the shadow side, which is neglect that we don't really talk about. Mm. And, you know, the thing that I'm starting to see in my work with clients, like neglect can occur like in a really healthy family with great parents. But, you know, let's say you were one of 10 kids and there's only so much of mom and dad that can go around, right? So when what I'm what I'm observing in my women and also what I know from my own journey is like coming from when we come from backgrounds of neglect, we can be very resentful about having to take care of ourselves. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, you know, because it, it was never really modeled for us, mm-hmm. you know, appropriate self care might not have ever been modeled. There might not have been abuse but there just might not have been great modeling of self-care. Definitely not. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I mean, how often does that happen? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's to give our, our children, our kids, the new generation, what a great gift is to show them that. So they do have a model. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's for a lot of women. That's a big motivator. Of course, I don't want to pass on to my kids what I got. 
Right. So yeah, learning, learning, you know, having to really rewrite, um, it's like reprogramming the hard drive <laughs> so that, you know, self-care can actually become a priority. And, you know, the thyroid, like we were saying, it's the canary in the coal mine. Right. Like warning, 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 you're going too far. You're pushing too hard. Yeah. Right. Do we pay attention or, or not? Mm -hmm. So can we do some tapping? I, yes. The challenge is that, you know, we have obviously our video version of the podcast and then there's other people listening on iTunes or just to the audio file. Mm -hmm. um, but would that be possible for us to do a little tapping? Absolutely. Yes, let's do some. I'm going to sit up straight here. Uh, let's see, what should we tap on? Let's think about, I mean, if you wanted to tap on... If either of you wanted to tap on something that you would like to clear, we could do that. Or uh, in tapping, there's also what's called surrogate tapping. Mm -hmm. So let's say um, somebody I know is going through a difficult time. I can tap on myself as that person. Mm. So even though I'm Joe and I'm having a hard time, but you know, here I am, Marcella, sitting here tapping. So we could also do a kind of surrogate tapping for your audience so that, you know, they can join in with us. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why don't you think about um, the sort of predominant emotional issue, like one of the biggest things that you hear your women dealing with well i mean i think just everything we've been we've been right. talking about that i'm not worthy um, that lack of worthiness um, or maybe even a lack of belief that we can heal uh -huh. okay so those are two different things so yeah. which um okay so one is i'm not worthy i'm not worthy of healing the second is i don't believe i can Maybe let's do the, um, what do you think, Dana, about doing the, uh, I don't believe I can. Here. I don't believe I can. Yeah. Yeah. I think that okay. would maybe speak to the most people out there listening. Great. So why don't we do this? Um, you guys say as I say and do as I do. Okay. But if you have other words, so like as you're tapping, I mean, you can plug this in for yourself if you have that belief, but you can also plug it in for the audience. Like, let's just make it a, a, a big group tapping with everybody who's listening. Okay. okay. Um, so if other words come through you, throw them into the mix. Can so we just, say it in our minds or do we yeah, need to just say it out loud? Say it out yeah, loud, right. is, We got to say it. Can't be thinking yeah. it. Got to say it. Say it loud and okay. proud. Got it. <laughs> okay, so this is, I don't believe I can heal. Okay. I'm just writing it down because that's what I do. Okay. Okay, so let's start by tapping right here on the side of either hand. It's totally fine. Just on this fleshy outside part of the hand. And again, just repeat after me. And if you have other words that come forth, please just speak them out. Alrighty. Even though I don't believe that I can really heal. Even though I don't believe I can really heal. I've had this condition for so long. I've had this condition, had this for, condition so for so long. I don't really think I could heal it for good. I don't, I don't really think, think I, I could, could heal, heal it for good. good. Okay. And even though this is how I feel. And even though, even though this is how, how I feel. I deeply love and accept myself. I, I deeply, deeply love, love and accept myself. myself. Okay, so let's go up to the top of the head. I don't believe I can heal. I don't, I don't believe, believe I, can I can heal. heal. I don't really believe I can really heal. I don't, I don't really, really believe, believe I, can I can really heal. I've had this condition for so long. I've had this, had condition, this condition for, for so, so long. This struggle with my thyroid. The, the struggle, struggle with, with my thyroid. thyroid. And all the ways it shows up in my life. And in all the ways it shows, it shows up in my life. life. All these symptoms. All, all these, these symptoms. symptoms. Okay, tapping on the collarbone point. It's totally overwhelming. 
It's, it's totally, totally overwhelming. overwhelming. Uh huh. And then we're going to tap underneath the arm like we call it the bra strap point. So I, can, I just slap it with all four fingers. Okay. All these thyroid symptoms. All these thyroid, thyroid symptoms. symptoms. Okay. It's so much to deal with. It's so, it's so much, much to, deal to deal with. with. Okay. And I don't really feel like I can really heal. And I, and don't, I don't really, really feel, feel like, like I can, I can really heal. heal. I would love to heal. I would love, love to, to heal. heal. I would love to be liberated from this. I would, I would love, love to be, to be liberated, liberated from this. this. I would love to really break through. I would, I would love, love to, to really, really break, break through. through. But I don't think I can. But I don't, I don't think, think I, can. I can. Okay. Why not? Why, Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Mm, because I haven't yet. Because, because I, I haven't yet. yet. Because it feels like it's been a long, long time. Because, because it feels like it's been, been a long time. time. Okay. Let's now see. Here's a deeper level. Let's just go here and see how this feels. But maybe that's okay. But maybe, maybe that's, that's okay. okay. Maybe I have needed to walk this path. Maybe, maybe I have needed, needed to walk, to walk this, this path. path. To bring myself exactly here. To bring myself, bring myself exactly, exactly here. here. To this point where I can say. To this, this point, point where, where I can, can say. say. Okay, let's all take a deep breath here. I deserve the healing I desire. I deserve, I deserve the healing, the healing I, desire. I desire. It's okay for me to heal. It's okay, it's okay for, for me, me to heal. heal. It's safe for me to heal. It's safe, it's safe for, for me to heal. heal. It's safe for me to make friends with my body. It's safe, it's safe for me to make friends with my body. body. And to allow my body the healing it deserves. And, and to, to allow, allow my body, body the healing it deserves. I choose to believe this. I choose, I choose to, believe to believe this. this. And I deeply love and accept myself exactly as I am. And I deeply, I deeply love and accept myself exactly as I am. am. Okay, let's stop and take a deep breath. I feel like you look different. You're smiling. I feel great. Me too. <laughs> wow, cool. Okay, so can you tell us about the the SUDs, the kind of that before and after metric people can use when they're doing this to compare? Yes. How they feel before and after. Yeah, I didn't do the SUD on this. Um, right. But what you can do is you look at that belief, like I, I don't believe I can heal. And then you can ask yourself, how true is it on a scale of one to 10? Kind of like when you go to the doctor, right? How painful is it on a scale of one to 10? 10 being it's absolutely true. Um, one, if it's a one or a zero, we don't even need to tap on it. Uh -uh. Um, if Getting a number feels difficult. Like sometimes people say, well, I don't know the exact number. You can think, okay, is it, like if you're tapping with children, children love tapping. It's such a great tool to teach children. So with children, you can say, okay, is it small, medium, or large, right? You can use your hands. Uh, do I feel this a lot? Do I feel it somewhat? Do I feel it a little? So you just want to have a gauge. Okay. And then after you tap, gauge it again. So it's kind of like a pre and post. Hmm. Um, I can tell from the looks, I mean, I can tell from the looks on your faces, like Ginny, you look like you're kind of glowing, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, Dana, you guys both look pretty happy. Yeah, it does feel good. And it's, it's interesting though, because I did, you know, I did have a set several sessions, uh, several months ago. And I remember her doing the, uh, where she asked me at the very beginning, okay, on a scale of one to 10. And I would be like, you know, 10. And then we would go through a system, a series, and then she would say, now how? And I'm like, 10. And then after a couple of times, it was like six, mm -hmm. you know, and we got down to about a three or a two and then we stopped or whatever. So that's kind of what I was thinking when you were doing it. So I was like, okay, so I'm, you know, before we started, you know, I'm about a nine. So now, okay, I'm, I'm about an eight. I'm about a seven. I can, you know, so, you know, I need to go back after the show. <laughs> do and keep doing more. it. Do and keep doing okay. Well, here's, right. let me ask you a question here, Dana. Um, and this is a good question to ask yourself after you do a round of tapping. 
right? So you can do this with yourself, as you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so you were at a nine and now you're like at an eight or a seven. Mm-hmm. So what came up when we were tapping and what do you feel like makes it not a zero? So we're working with, I don't believe I can heal. It's been so long. Okay. And it's just been so long. It's hard to remember what it feels like to be well. And so although my efforts haven't been full on, Jenny's story is a little bit different than mine. I'm about to embark on a different journey. I'm, a, I'm going to be a big number this year for my birthday, so I've got this plan for me. But up until then, I feel like it was kind of, as you said before, a little, like, two steps forward, three steps back. Like, it just, it just never really, the timing wasn't right, and why not, and that's not fair, and can't it just, like, be gone? Because it's so much. I just don't even really have the energy to, like, I just okay. don't want to think about it. So let's do, can we do a little more right here? Sure. And let's go right up to the top of the head. It's been so long. It's been so long. Two steps forward, three steps back. Two steps forward, three steps back. It's been a long road. It's been a long road. Okay, let's take a breath here. Can I be done already? Can't I be done already? I can barely even remember what it's like to be healthy. I can barely even remember what it's like to be healthy. Okay, tell me if this feels true, Dana. That makes me feel really sad. Makes me feel really sad. Something like that? Mm-hmm. Okay, tell me if this feels true. It makes me feel defeated. It makes me feel defeated. Yeah, okay, so defeated. And I'm so used to feeling defeated. And I'm so used to feeling defeated. Yes, okay. Let's just do this right here for a moment. I'm so used to feeling defeated. I'm so used to feeling defeated. Okay. See if this is also part of it. I don't want to get my hopes up. I don't want to get my hopes up. Because I've been disappointed before. Because I've been disappointed before. Okay, good. Let's take a breath here. Good. So, Dana, just if you can, just allow yourself to just go into that, all of that. Like, I don't want to get my hopes up. I feel defeated. Just give it a lot of space. Like, okay, I acknowledge all of this. I acknowledge all of this. Yeah, I acknowledge it with love. I acknowledge it with love. Yeah, just because this is the way it's been. Just because this is the way it's been. It doesn't have to continue to be this way. It doesn't have to continue to be this way. Okay. And I give myself a lot of love and kindness in this moment. And I give myself a lot of love and kindness in this moment. Great. Let's take a deep breath here. That feels a lot more tingly. Ah. You were at like a seven or an eight. Like I was, a, yeah, I was about a seven and a half, and now I'm at about a five, four and a half, yeah. five. We were getting down into the boiler room there. We were. Exactly. We so were. what I would invite, you know, like if we were to continue working together, or of course you can do this on your own, that feeling of I don't want to get my hopes up because I'll be disappointed and the exasperation of like it's been so long when is it going to break through already like are those feelings familiar feelings to you yes. or are they unique to this particular situation and if they're familiar to you you know where's your earliest memory like where did that little dana decide that she wasn't going to get her hopes up because she um didn't want to be disappointed. So that's like, I mean, that's just something you can, you know, take okay. on your own and okay. just, and then, and then tap with that, right? Just keep peeling that onion. Okay. You can do it. I can. Yeah. I that's can. so amazing, you know, cause you look, I mean, you look beautiful and you look radiant and you look amazing. Thank you. And that's the whole, oh, yeah. that's the whole invisible illness part of this. Oh, okay. Is that, but thank you. But, you know, I have a headache and um, I'm really cold. 
my nose is cold like a puppy dog or something. Um, I'm really tired and I don't have any energy, but I smile and I put my makeup on and I stand oh. here, right? <laughs> and it looks different. And so, you know, um, it's that's the common theme for a lot of thyroid patients. They're like, I'm get up and go to work or dress my clothes and stuff on. And then, you know, I'm really all the stuff that's going on inside. People have no idea. So I feel invisible about it, you know? So that's the very common, common theme. So. Okay. So there's another one right there. The whole yeah. piece of being invisible. Wow. I could do like a whole EFT series for you guys of you like. Good. Tapping you would love thyroid. to do it. Thyroid. Oh boy. Here yeah. Ooh. Let's, Ooh. let's write some of this down because. Um, yes, please. That's, that's a really exciting piece yeah. and aspect mm. to healing. So definitely. Interesting. Well, thank we, can, so we can talk forever. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah. With with us. And this, for this experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, thank cool. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, um, thank you guys for inviting me. This was really, this was potent. Yeah. Thank you for being Hold here. Hold your book up again so everybody can see it again. Yes. Oh, yes. Here we are. Tap, taste, heal. Use emotional freedom techniques to eat joyfully and love your body. Jenny's Written got her. Yeah. Written by Marcella. Yes. Real. Love it. Um, me. Are there any last little action items or takeaways you want to leave our listeners with before we sign off today? Well, I would say the first takeaway, you know, based on what we just did, Dana, you know, is to really honor yourself exactly where you're at and just allow space for that to be because whatever is going on, there's some wisdom inside of it that is there to be mined. And, you know, tapping can certainly help with that, among other things. And the other piece is um, your past is not your future. Mm. And that there is room for things to actually heal on a really quantum level. So I would just say, hold those in your heart. If you want to find out more about me, you can reach me through my website, marcellafriel.com. Uh, I do have a program called the Women, Food, and Forgiveness Academy. It's a six-month comprehensive online transformational mentorship program where we, we work on these things at a very, very deep level. Yeah. So. I love that. Well, these are amazing resources for our community, and we're so happy to share them with our community. So thank you so much for the work that you do and for sharing your your wisdom and insight with Hi. us today. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you both. This is, like I said, you have a beautiful um, constellation of offerings here. It's really, really lovely, very unique. So thank you for allowing me to be part of it. It is unique. It's an honor to be part of it and to uh -huh. see our community growing and on be on this journey together as a community has been so powerful. And uh -huh. we just, I love your message. You know, we really are capable of the most miraculous change, like the butterfly metaphor, you know, that we come back to over and over again on this thyroid healing journey, journey, mm -hmm. you know, change is possible. Transformation is possible. Transformation is possible. Mm -hmm. So thank you way. for your tools and your, your inspiration reminding us of that today. Mm. Yeah. My pleasure. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us for another episode of Thyroid Refresh TV, where we give you the inspiration and information you need to make the best choices for your health. To receive your free Thyroid Thrivers Grocery Guide, visit thyroidrefresh.com. And to learn more about Thyroid 30, our revolutionary 30-day wellness adventure, go to thyroidrefresh.com slash thyroid30. You do have the power to heal, and we have the tools. If you've enjoyed this this podcast and would like to help us continue inspiring and empowering thyroid patients worldwide, please leave us a review on iTunes. It would just make our day. You are what makes this community the amazing resource that it is. We so appreciate your listenership, your community, and your support. We're Dana and Ginny wishing you the best of health. See you next time. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.